Hey there, welcome to another video. Now that you understand how the app block extension work, let's fix the add to cart and save data into database. Uh, this is what we have done in the last video. When you click on this, it looks like it is adding to the cart, but it is not. So let's work on the backend. I did some changes behind the scene. I'll show you what I have done and we will move on because the video will get too long if I explain everything. The first thing I did was add some migration. We discussed this in the previous video. This is what I have done. I updated the setting so the ID will be an integer and I will also I also fix it in the setting page so it should auto increment. We don't have to pass it to um, the setting. I created another table or model called wishlist. This one will store all our wishlist. It has one ID for auto increment. It has it will store the customer ID, product ID and also the shop because uh, we have to know which customer added product to their wish list or uh, which shop has all this uh, wish list. That is the data that we need and also created app will be useful for sorting in the future. So let's move on and also did the migration. So if I run the um, npm run Prisma Studio, let's see. So it will run the Prisma Studio. Wishlist is currently empty. I removed all the data. This is the setting, this is the session, and everything is empty for now because we didn't open up anything. Cool. I removed the data because I reset the database. That is how it looks like empty. Um, let's stop. The other thing I did was in the API wishlist, which we created in the previous videos where we had this um, API and how we send requests to data. I did some of this. So here is what I have done. In the action, I we store the method and I also wait for the form data that the form data comes. I will uh, store it as an object. Then I store each of these uh, the, uh, fields to its own constant. Customer ID, product ID, shop, and shop will be the shop name. Then I will return a JSON if one of these data are missing because these are required fields. Yes, you're right, in the database I put them as optional to ignore some of the errors, but I will make them um, required if they do not enter. So it is just going to return a JSON at missing data so the user knows that there is a missing data. In the post method, because when you save data to the database, you have to do a post request. Um, when the post request comes, I'm going to save them in the database using um, DB wishlist create. These are all uh, Prisma stuff, okay? So DB is where we imported the DB from Prisma, which is the DB server. We discussed this in the previous video, but I will check this again. This is what we have a Prisma client, and this is what we export, like Prisma. But we import it as a DB or database. So it is a Prisma client, which is interacting with database. Moving on um, to the next one. In here, and this is what new thing I have added. I store the response as a JSON to a constant and then I return cores. Cores is a, an error that you might get if the request is coming from elsewhere, like third party domain. So if you are installing your app on someone's website, the requests are coming from your app. That is like core policy error, which you have to fix in your app. To fix this, I installed um, a package which is called Remix Utilities. Very important, I think, to fix this uh, in the Remix, but I had to install a package. So let me show you. If I go to the package.json, um, this is the Remix Utilities. I added this, and the only other configuration I did was in the Remix file. Uh, I added these lines. You just have to check the GitHub repo, link below the description and then you can add the same thing and it will fix the core policy for you. You don't have to worry about the request coming from another uh, third party API. Cool, that's all I have done. Now let's test the API and see if this is saving data in the database. I open Postman and here is a test example. We put our store, um, our app URL, which is a Cloudflare tunnel, and then it should go to the slash API slash wishlist and for uh, the body, we will send some data. Let's say we are not uh, sending the shop for now and let's run it again post request to this API. Let's run the request and it should give us an error that data is missing. 
user should know um, so these text are uh, these fields are required then another one yes it was successful id of nine why i started from nine because i deleted the rest of the data again i'll come back to the browser let's oh let's refresh the prisma studio this is the data and this is the data that we have sent now let's make it into an actual app if i come to my front end this is the wishlist icon we can access product id here we can access the customer id we can access the shop name in this page we send it to our server server and database let's see how it works i will come to the wishlist and this is where we add wishlist to the cart here is the first thing i add i also enabled customer account if your store is a new store you might not have customer account to do that all you have to do is go to the setting customer account from here you will just create uh, you just enable it like show link in the header then i go with the classic customer account you can go with the new one that doesn't matter it just let user create an account which is i have done if user is not login their data will not be here so customer object will not be available if they are not login so in this um, uh, function this is what I do if customer is not login show an alert to login so this is how I check if and uh, of course this is going to be a liquid um, we can use if I can use unless unless is similar same as if but it is going to check if customer exists or not unless customer we are going to show an alert and also it should return okay once it does it should return it should not go anywhere so user should log in to be able to uh, access this API now uh, let's test this to see if this is showing or not if this is showing means we are not logging okay if this is not showing uh, means we are logging because I am logging in this account so let's refresh the page and let's check um, okay I'll just move myself if I open the script at the bottom you can see it does not show the uh, the code that I have added this one it's not even showing this one what is wrong this is the customer data and let's let's just update uh, the extension and yeah it is not saving you can see there is an error sometimes you get this type of error um, all you have to do is just kill your um, terminal run the command again this is the command and this is the team ID that we have to pass run it again and let's see if we still get any error When you rerun this again, um, you have to know that the new URL will be created for your app. So you can find that under the uh, Shopify app.taml and this is the URL that you need. If I open it in the new tab, I can copy this and it should work just fine. Okay, cool. We don't have any error. Let's go back and click again. Yeah, this is working fine. What? a name for the domain <laughs> okay these are random generated by I don't know Cloudflare or Shopify but yeah okay cool uh, that is the new um, API we can store it somewhere anywhere like and just in a variable but I will leave that on you normally you have to put it in environment variable that is where you should put it for now we can just create a app URL variable here and then paste the URL that we copied oops I didn't copy copy this and let's paste it because we are sending Ajax request to this URL for now let's just leave it there so if I save it let's come back to our theme refresh and let's check the script yeah the new script is here but our condition is not here because I am logging if you log out it is going to show that script okay so I'll move this one also inside to remove that comment now once we do that now we can send an Ajax request to the server save the data 
and how do we have access to the customer information now let me show you um, using uh, customer.id you can get the id of the customer using product.id you get the product id and for the shop domain you can use shop.permanent domain permanent domain is something that created by shopify and this is the dot my shopify domain and th that never changed so you can always use the permanent domain at the time of this recording unless shopify change something in the future and also if i come to my postman click in this code and it is going to you can select which type of request you can send by default that is i think coral but you can come here and say javascript fetch request it will ch convert your data into the fetch request that you have here I can just copy this and use it here you can like make it pretty you can change it uh, however you want but I just paste it here and instead of this URL that you see I am going to use this app URL okay so I'll just um, come here comment that uh, just add this dot app url plus wishlist yeah that makes sense app url next time you bring any changes just update your app url here and everything if you have more than one request of course that will be very easy to change variable here cool everything is fine now let's make this data dynamic customer id we have to pass it okay customer id then we have the product id and it should be AI cannot do that okay cool and this one is shop dot permanent domain yep that is all the data that we need we just create a form data object and then we are appending our new data it is going to be a post request to this URL with the request um, option okay cool now if we save our changes um, everything looks good Please provide the information in your request. I'm not sure what that error means, but yeah. Let's go back. This is our domain and everything is looking fine. We can also probably, if I come back to my code, at the bottom, click in this link to create a session for our data so this time if i come to the sessions and give it a refresh it should create a session but it have not created yet let me just refresh this again we discussed about this in the past videos but yeah this is the session we do need this but let's have it now let's come back to our front end let's see if this add to wish list work i will go to the console and see if there is any error that we get if i refresh everything looks good let's add wishlist uh, okay we didn't get any error if I go to the network tab in here uh, okay again I'll come here and check if we have this script yes we have this script but the rest of the scripts are not here this is another problem that I had about Shopify that it is not working in the previous video we fixed how we can uh, rerun the extension but now it is not working the same extension with the new data is not working again I have to kill the server and run this again it's going to run everything it's just taking too long to run too okay cool okay now we have the data and let's copy the URL this one is a better domain I guess so I'll close this I'll come here and update my domain name if I save it it should push the changes I hope it works this time yeah that's all the bug that you have to figure out by yourself and yep I'm live recording and I do not edit this video so hopefully you understand that how long it will take to record and 
and edit these videos cool now we have all the information we have the app URL which is the new one uh, now let's go and clean up the network and also console and add this to the wish list cool it added and let's see the response product was added to the wish list post request and this is the 10th product let's come to Prisma studio refresh it and here you go you have the data customer ID product ID shop ID next thing that you have to do is I will do this behind the scene easy but you can check the source code I'm not going to take too much of the time if user refresh here it should if uh, it should send a request and check if this is already in the wish list if it is then this one should be filled a heart with the filled um, that is where you change this from false to true and also I'll move this to the bottom in here after console doc we are going to add this line because it only have to toggle that if the request was successful something like that yeah that's it uh, it should do the trick yeah nothing else but I will do the rest behind the scene if you have any question you can ask below the video I try to explain everything but yeah that's how it works thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video